Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about Search in the 3D Warehouse. So in case you're unfamiliar, 3D Warehouse is an online repository of existing SketchUp 3D models that are created by our members and sometimes by our own team, the SketchUp team, and placed for you to use. Um, it's a great, great tool to have because if there's ever anything you don't want to have to model, um, you can model anything, like, like we always talk about. Model from scratch, sure, go for it. But every once in a while, you don't need a hero piece. You need a, a couch in the back of the room that indicates that there's a sitting place back there. And that's it. It's not important that it specifically match a couch. Uh, it's not going to be, you know, in the middle front of a render. So you can kind of just throw something in there. And that's where 3D Warehouse is perfect. You can go in and fill in a house, or you can actually find some pretty cool models on there to build things around. So, uh, but in order to navigate it, you do have to know what you're doing, know what you're looking for and know how to use the tools. And that's what we're gonna talk about right now. All right, so I am in a completely empty model. I'm not empty, Sri of course is here with me, but uh, this is not my working model. If you're going to use the 3D Warehouse button, I would recommend that you either use it from a blank model or you go online and just navigate through the 3D Warehouse and download and save models to your hard drive. This is the first tip. Tip number one, don't download 3D models directly into your working model. And the reason for this is pretty simple. We're gonna talk about evaluating models when we come into 3D Warehouse. We're gonna, we're gonna tell you how to like, you know, find the best stuff that you can find. But every once in a while, even though I'm, I'm really careful about filtering and that sort of thing, I'll hit something that's just a monstrous file or corrupt, or not corrupt, but uh, a messy file, something like that. And on occasion, downloading that into my working model can cause problems in my working model. So I recommend as much as possible, when you go to 3D Warehouse, just check, double check, triple check your models in a blank file or download them separately and open them before you pull them into your working model. Because the worst thing you do is take, you know, a model you already got 20, 30 hours into and then import something that you thought was going to be just a an end table and it turns out to be an entire house. And now it's all laid over the top of your existing house, that kind of thing. So we're still away from that. All right. First things first, let's talk about searching. So there's a couple ways to search. Of course, we can search off an image because I can click on the image search right here, or I could search off of words. So if I want to search off of words, we're just going to go simple and say sofa. That also means couch in some languages. So uh, there you go. So if I look at this, the first thing that comes up, it tells me I have <laughs> 113,147 results. So there is over 100,000 models on 3D Warehouse that have the word sofa somewhere in there related to them. So that's nice, but that's that's a lot, right? So at this point, we want to figure out what are exactly are we looking for? So we have a couple options here. Uh, first is we could change what we're looking for. So the first thing we're in is models. These are just public. Any model that anybody put up that had, says couch, there it is. If we go to catalogs, then it will search for any catalogs that people have put up. These, these are usually put up by companies. So companies, these are this person's or this, this company's materials, that sort of thing. And these are, are content creators or, or, or uh, fabricators that have collections that have SOFA relative to the name. Separate from that, collections are user-created collections. So these aren't the people who fabricate and make these, but these are curated lists that include SOFA somewhere in the name that are made by our users. And then, of course, we have materials. So if there's anything, a material that's called SOFA, then we can see that right there. So I'm going to go back to models. Um, in this case, let's see. Let's take a look around. So we can see we're just kind of right now sorting by relevance. I, Unless I was pretty specific, like I put a manufacturer in a color, I probably won't use relevance because what's relevant about this SOFA versus another SOFA? I don't know. That's that's back-end magic that I don't really necessarily understand. Um, but if I come down here, I can see other things like the polygon count. If that's important to me, I can sort by that. 
If uh, again, if a specific name, because I'm looking for a specific manufacturer's couch is important, then turn on title. I will tend to look at popularity and likes because in general, a sofa that gets downloaded a whole lot more is going to show up like that. So I'm going to mention this because I want to turn it off. I do have this find more like this. So if I do have something that pops up and I'm like, ooh, that's close but not perfect, I could hit find more like this and get more similar to that. I'm going to just close this because I know this is coming up on my, in my face. But that's what that button is for. Find more like this. So if you find one that's good but not perfect, try that. All right, we're going to talk a little bit. So I do have this ability, popularity or likes, where I can rate my stuff based on that. Um, like I said, I tend to go here because if something has been downloaded a whole bunch, it's a popular model, then it's probably likely to be a higher quality than something that has not been downloaded. The big thing that I want to touch on here, though, is filters. So let's look at our filters. So first thing we have up here is all results versus products and models. Models are uploaded by four or by by uh, three warehouse members. Products are uploaded by manufacturers. So people putting their own models up here. There are pluses and minuses to both of these. Sometimes products can be very heavy. Sometimes models can be low quality. There's no guarantee that one or the other is going to be a better model. But you do have the ability, if you're looking for like a specific model from a manufacturer, you might want to turn on products rather than just models. Then below that, we have categories. So if I came in here and I'm looking for a sofa, I could come down and say, okay, well, I don't, I only want to look in furniture. In fact, subcategory, I want to look at residential furniture. That's going to get any commercial couches out of here. I don't know what a commercial couch is, but they'll be gone. The other thing I look at here are file sizes and polygon count. So again, depending on what you're downloading for, these kind of videos are, are, are fun but difficult because it's really hard to tell you exactly what to do <laughs> because there's options. So again, if I'm looking for a specific couch from a specific manufacturer, it's gonna be in the very front of a high quality render I'm gonna do for this living room design, then I'm gonna to wanna to look for big files. I'm gonna to wanna to look for something with a lot of faces, a lot of polygons, something that's gonna be a hero model that I wanna drop in there. If it's something that's sitting in the back of a room and I just need to, like I said, this is, this is a, a basement, maybe this is the before render, right? So I just need something that says there is a couch here and it is blue and that's all I need, then I could probably go with a lower polygon count. So for both of these, there is a shortcut here to say, uh, you know, I want to keep it small versus I could go all the way up to, you know, 100 megabytes or more. Or I can use a slider to get a, a, a larger, uh, a specific range here. I want to go somewhere in the middle, something like that. That's possible. Polygon counts, again, same thing. I can say here, here's a here's what I want to do, or I want to pick one in the middle, or I can come in here and I can use the sliders to say I want a bigger, uh, or generally with polygon counts, probably the thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here and you're gonna say, all right, drop down from the max, because I don't want to do all the way. I want to say, you know, yeah, up to 10. Nothing more than that. I don't need more than 10,000 for a couch. You do have some options here for certified content. That is content that has been reviewed and certified. Dynamic component, live component, or geolocated. Um, I probably don't want a geolocated sofa in general. I, I want to put it where I want. If you know who made a specific one that you're looking for, you could put that in. Or if you know a specific title, you could look that. Or if you know part of a title. Ah, I saw a cool sofa and it was called something, something squishy, comfort, or something like that. You could put that in there. Great, get that. And then the same thing, if you have dates, date modify, if you know any of those additional features because you're looking for a specific thing you've used before, that's there. Visibility, public versus private. Of course, private is gonna be private models that you have access to. If it's somebody else's private model, this doesn't give you access to it. This is your private models that you can already get to. Um, and then yeah, as a specific filter right there. So then we have some other things we can turn off here uh, that we do or don't want to see. And then I'm going to apply. And you can see that's going to switch. Look, it dropped from over 100,000 down to 200 results. These are the results that fit inside what I was looking for. So if I come down here and I go, okay, this looks good. This looks good. Oh, this is, this is, no, not, that's not the one. This is this. Here we go. This is what I want. This looks like the, the sofa that's in my basement right now. Perfect. If you click on it, you have a couple of options in here. You can say 3D preview. Uh, which will load up the 3D viewer. This is the 
web viewer for SketchUp files. And that's gonna give me the ability to actually spin around this. Here is why I recommend doing this. This is not actually the model. This is a picture of a render of the model on this big blank thing. And then back here, we have the actual model. It looks good. I mean, it's a good looking model. It's very simple. But uh, the actual image they put up there is, it's also watermarked. That's interesting. Um, not it. So again, I don't want to download this into my model. But if this is the right couch, I download this, check it out, get rid of this box up here because I don't need to be pulling this into my living room and then clean it up and use just that. This is why we want to go check models, not just download them instantly because this kind of stuff happens. If it turns out this is good, then of course I recommend giving it a like or maybe even saving it into your collection, something like that. Uh, but yeah, let's say we like this. This is good enough. This has the right materials, the right information. So I'm going to say download. Now it's going to say, do we want to put it into the model? If I say, okay, it's going to drop it into my working model, which is empty intentionally because that's what I wanted to look at. If I say no, it's going to offer to save it out to my hard drive somewhere and cancel, of course, will stop it. Because I'm in an empty model, I'm going to say okay, and I'm going to bring it in and drop it right, probably at the origin. Generally speaking, I try to drop stuff at the origin. All right, so there we go. Now, this could not have been a better example of why you don't want to just drop this right into a model. So this is huge, right? And for some reason, uh, it came with a bonus cushion. And that cushion is laying on the ground over here, like 100 feet away from my model. Uh, interesting. 200 feet away from my model. So because I brought it into its own model here, I can double click. I can you know, get rid of that bonus cushion, which is going to shrink my component down. See that I got smaller. Zoom in over here. Get rid of this. I don't need that, right? My, my component box just got smaller again. And I'm gonna grab this. See, that's in its own component. So I have this inside of a wrapper, inside of a wrapper. I don't need that. So I'm gonna pick right here. I'm gonna explode once. And now if I come in here, now I'm in with the actual pieces. That's perfect. And I could just for, for I guess just for the sake of keeping my model nice and clean, I could bring that, drop it here, that point, maybe I'll even spin it so that it's facing forward like that. Because when I go to place this into a new model, it's gonna place it by this point. The other thing I probably do if I wanna save this is maybe get rid of Sri. So it's just this model. I could do some other things in here like my edges are showing, so maybe I'll come into this context, select all, and then go to soften and smooth and then resoften that. That looks good. Uh, you know, Same thing has to happen with this piece, so maybe I'll triple click. Toggle soften, there we go. Same thing here. But they're components, that's nice. This, this is, is well modeled in that these are all component pieces. So that's good. All right, uh, yeah, so I could do that kind of cleanup. Then from here, I have the option of just going to file save, which will save this whole thing and everything connected to it as its own model. Or I could right click on this and I could make this into its own by just saving this piece out. So if I make it a component, Ouch. Then I can right click here. I could save out and then save this either to my own 3D warehouse, to Trimble Connect, or to my local device to be used as a separate component, which I could just drop into my other house. So there we go. That's a quick and easy look at uh, the 3D warehouse. A wonderful tool. It is a great spot to go get uh, models from, but you do need to know what you're looking for, how you're looking for it. And then of course, Make sure you know how to clean it up and, and deal with it once you get it down. I was going to talk about searching by image because that's a button that's in there. Um, I did skip over it because I thought, you know, we should just do a whole separate video on searching for image. We should talk about what makes a good image, what doesn't, uh, that sort of thing. So this ended up being a big enough video where uh, we can just focus on this is just for text search and I will do a separate one for searching by image. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already do, please subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, leave us a comment down below. Let us know how you use 3D Warehouse. Did I miss something? Is there a different way to search that I didn't talk about? Or is there another idea you have for one of these videos that you think that we're missing out? We don't have some content that you think we should have. Let us know about any of that down in the comments. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more. Let's show you something you wanna see. Thank you.